From high atop Healthcare Hill in Central Maryland, this is BSN Headline News. Today's top story is Bonsacour strives to provide extraordinary care. How? Well, how's this? Bon Secours Virginia recently announced that Bon Secours will build Richmond's first community hospice house. Following Bon Secours strategic quality plan to ensure our care is extraordinary, Bon Secours Virginia is leading the effort to build this $5 million residential hospice and palliative care facility in the Richmond area. The facility is designed to provide a high level of care in a home-like environment. According to Peter Bernard, CEO of Bon Secours Virginia Health System, currently there is no hospice house available in Richmond. Based on a recent survey, the need for hospice care in our area is great and increasing each year. The community hospice house will provide a high quality of life for patients with terminal illness while providing emotional and spiritual support to their families. The community hospice house will have 16 patient suites, each with garden access, as well as common areas where families can spend time with their loved ones, unencumbered by caregiving duties. During a recent Bon Secours board orientation in Marriottsville, Maryland, Bon Secours Health System Inc. CEO Rich Statuto spoke about Bon Secours' goal with regard to palliative care. Second area is to provide un paralleled palliative care. We talk about bringing people to health and wholeness, uh, a special focus on the poor and the dying. Um, we want to make sure that Bon Secours is the best in the country at providing uh, palliative care services. According to hospice and palliative care physician Sister Vicki Segura, MD, CBS, the community hospice house will be grounded in our deep commitment to the sick and dying, thereby alleviating human suffering, a founding element of the Ministry of the Sisters of Bon Secours. Built for the community, this will be a place without barriers and outside the competitive healthcare marketplace. Services will include pain management and relief of other symptoms of illness with a focus on comfort and improved quality of life. Psychosocial and spiritual care for patients and families will also be available, as well as bereavement counseling and support. Please join us in celebration of Bon Secours Virginia's plans to build Richmond's first community hospice house and Bon Secours' commitment to be good help to those in need. Bon Secours, our name is our mission. In other news, and in keeping with our series on the Strategic Quality Plan, this week, CEO Rich DeTuto talks about our goal to transform our health delivery. Transforming our health care delivery, um, one of the things that's really important for us is that we have a strong um, primary care base. Um, uh, physicians, allied health professionals, nurse practitioners that integrate wellness uh, we develop med medical homes that are not uh, uh, reactive to patient care when someone shows up at, uh, at the office, but that we're proactive in terms of planning their care needs over a longer period of time. Uh, we want to be able to coordinate that. And one of the measurements we said is, you know, if we're going to grow as a ministry, we want to make sure that our primary care share exceeds our current acute care share as an organization. Um, and so uh, we'll begin to measure that. In order to continue to invest in our ministry, in order for us to serve uh, the vulnerable and the poor and, and be responsive, we need to generate, uh, at a minimum, a 4% operating margin. So uh, there's a lot of work that needs to uh, go into what we're doing to make sure that we're efficient and effective. We need to work with all of our physicians and make sure that the care we're providing is optimal. We're not overutilizing. Uh, testing and services, our electronic medical record helps us. We have a huge database that we can mine and understand where is the best practices in terms of, of care for chronic diseases and other, other services that we provide. Um, we need to um, make sure that we're not wasting any dollars, that we're contracting effectively across all of our, our communities and that we're, um, um, we're purchasing our services um, 
uh, effectively. Long term, um, uh, we really need to um, uh, be in the top quartile around the country in terms of um, our cost per case. I think as an industry, we've not spent a lot of our uh, time and focus to, to look at the cost and bending that cost curve. But if we're going to provide value to the purchasers, we need to be high quality, efficient, and do it for um, a lower cost than we're doing currently. Next week, Rich talks about our goal to express our Catholic identity. Finally, last week we told you about the Mercy Loan Fund and socially responsible investing. Now, our story focused on the Mercy Loan Fund, but this week we wanted to provide you with more about what goes on behind the scenes of socially responsible investing. To do that, we spent a little bit of time with Ross Darrow, Director of Treasury Services. What we found was there is more to it than what meets the eye. Here's Ross Darrow to help explain. I'm Ross Darrow and I am the Director of Treasury Services. Community investment program uh, stems out of us being socially responsible investors. So uh, as an organization, we have approximately $750 million, which are invested in financial assets. Um, as a socially responsible investor, we take steps to make sure these assets are doing what we want them to do. So we limit the types of stocks we buy, we advocate for things that we believe in through the companies that we own, and we invest in the community, which is a community investment fund. Community investment can mean a lot of different things. Um, in general, it means that we're putting money to work in the communities that we serve. More specifically, it's um, investments in organizations, really loans to organizations that are making direct on the ground investments in the communities, doing things like job creation, um, community development, low income housing, um, things like that that really affect the folks who are, are least economically empowered. There's a number of different ways you can do community investment. We've taken a bit more of a um, a less risky approach and so we we seek out organizations that in turn seek out other organizations that make investments on the ground so we'll find an organization for instance like the mercy loan fund which will in turn find developers in the communities that we serve and make loans with the money that we have provided as well as other investors have provided to um, affect the project they're trying to do bond secure treasury services working behind the scenes to help build healthy communities. Well, that's it for this week. Stay tuned to this portal for future up-to-the-minute information on these and other stories on BSN Headline News. I'm Dave Schlachter. Thanks for joining us. BSN Headline News is a production of Bomb Secure Productions and is solely responsible for its content.